How's it going everybody? This is JTEC95 and today we're going to be doing something a little bit crazy and quite a bit absurd. We are going to be attempting to install Windows 95 on a 386DX running at only 33 megahertz. <laughs> uh. Now I'm sure a lot of you guys are probably thinking, why would you even attempt that? That's ridiculous. You're right, it is. <laughs> but I'm still going to do it. But actually, not too long ago, on one of the shorts I uploaded of me playing Commander Keen on my 38640, um, a YouTuber, Olympia and Alcus Barma Gian, I hope I pronounced that right, commented if that 386 would run Windows 95. And I responded, not very well. I attempted it several years ago, <laughs> which is true. I, I did try it before. Not on this one, but on that 386 that was in that video. I actually did a overview of that 386 system um, in a video I did really early on in the channel. You can check that out too if you want. But no, that machine, when I tried that, it had a motherboard that had extensive damage from a leaking Varda battery and that caused a lot of serious system instability because certain traces and things like that were not in good shape at all. I mean, that thing would hang up and crash just running DOS. So, all that's been taken care of now. I went into that in the video how I got a replacement motherboard, which was the same as the crappy one that was in it, and that system's all good now. But I have not tried to put Windows 95 on a 386 ever since then. Well, I figure today, I'm going to give it a shot. We're going to try it again and see how it goes. So, uh, really quick, let's uh, go over the specs of this machine. So for the internals, we've got a pretty straightforward 386 setup. Um, I actually just put this machine together with spare parts for the sole purpose of doing this video. Um, the board is a Micronics Baby Gemini 386 33 board. Um, we've got 8 megabytes of RAM here, comprised of 8 1 megabyte sticks. You can see the processor down there, an AMD AM386DX, running at 33 megahertz. The I.O. controller card is an Acer branded card. You can see right down in there. Uh, video adapter is a Sang Labs ET4000. And the sound card is a Sound Blaster Viber 16 CT4180. Not the greatest sound card in the world, but it's what I had lying around. We've got a Maxter hard drive, which is hard to read because of the glare. It's a Maxter 7213AT. And we've got a 5 and a quarter inch floppy drive and a 3 and a half inch floppy drive. Yeah, I basically set this thing up for the sole purpose of doing this video. Because I have the 38640 set up just the way I want it, and I didn't feel like messing with that one in case something went wrong. And, yeah. So that's pretty much it for the internals of the machine. Now, I'm sure the next question certain people are going to be asking is, Wait a minute. This thing doesn't have a CD-ROM drive. And I just realized I have a hole in my shirt. Ignore that. <laughs> Um, yeah, this thing doesn't have a CD-ROM drive. How the heck are you going to install Windows 95 on here? Well... <laughs> we're going to be installing it from floppy disks. This is going to be interesting. Yeah, early on in the retail release of Windows 95, they did offer it in a 3.5 inch floppy drive version. The version I have comes with, counting the boot disk, 21 floppy disks. So this is going to take a while. But without further ado, let's get this baby booted up and attempt to install Windows 95 on a 386. So let's get this thing booted up. There we go. 
8 megabytes of RAM. Alrighty. There we go, and we have loaded DOS. Now, let's see how much disk space we've got. We have 170,872,832 bytes free. And converting that to megabytes, we have... That is 170 megabytes of free space. So that should be more than enough. So let's uh, get a little closer on the monitor and start with setup disk one. Pop that disk in there. Go to drive B. Alrighty. And here we go. Well, so far, so good. It's running the check on the system. And she's clunking away. Here we go. Please wait while setup initializes. Copying files needed for Windows setup. And here we go. Setup is now preparing the Windows 95 setup wizard. Let's see if the mouse works. Oh, cool. It does. Yay. And this is why I install mouse drivers under MS-DOS. You never know when you're going to need them. <laughs> and this is going to take a minute. I'm going to skip past little bits like this because this is going to take a while. We go collecting information about your computer okay next yes we'll put it in the Windows directory checking for installed components this will take a minute so again we will pause and be right back and it is checking for components still Checking for available disk space, which I know I have enough. Setup can save your existing MS-DOS and Windows system files. With these files, you can uninstall Windows 95 if necessary. You want to save your existing system files in case you want to decide to uninstall. Sure, why not? And it's recommended anyway, so maybe that is a good idea. Just in case this turns out to be a bust and I want to go back to MS-DOS. But I have a good feeling this is going to go well. I mean, I'm not even into the brunt of it yet, so I can't really make that judgment call, but it seems like it's going okay so far. So all we can do is hope and pray that this goes well. Saving the system files. And there we go. That part is done. Click the type of setup you prefer, then click next. Okay. Mm, we'll do custom. Let's see. Alrighty. There we go. JTEC95 and YouTube. And that is hard to see. Let me adjust my settings really fast. That's better. There we go. Do you want to set do you want setup to look for all hardware devices? Yes. Okay, I do not have a CD-ROM drive or a network adapter. So 
we'll let this thing analyze the computer. The only two things in here that it might try to find a driver for are maybe the graphics card, but that's probably just going to come up as standard VGA. And then the sound card, but it should be able to figure that out pretty well because it's a plug and play card. So we'll let it do its thing. Oh, dang, that was fast. <laughs> <clears throat> It even says up there, if there is no disk activity for a long time, turn your computer off. Then turn it back on and choose safe recovery. Well, hopefully we won't have to do that. Because that would be a pain in the rump. I really don't use a lot of Maxter hard drives, but... The few that I have used work actually very well. They're very rugged. I've had more problems with certain Western digital ones. But anyway, Windows comes with email, fax, tools, and blah, blah, blah. I don't need any of that. So we'll ignore that. We don't need that. Um, want that, want that. Uh, don't really need that. Yes, 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 yes. Don't need briefcase. And communications. Don't need any of that because we are not going to be fiddling with network. And if I ever decide to, I don't need backup. Defrag and disk compression. Mm, I don't really need that. I don't like using that stuff. Don't need that, don't need that. Multimedia, that's fine. Okay. Cool. Actually, we're not going to be using that much space. Uh, don't need really that, because we don't have a network. So we'll hit next. Hey, it detected! Nice! Seng Labs ET4000. Booyah! Now let's see. Monitor, unknown monitor. Uh, English, Windows 95, Unknown Monitor, Standard PC. There we go, that should be just fine. Preparing to copy files. And this is where the waiting game begins. So, we're going to... Once it begins, we're going to kind of fast forward through this. Not skip it, I want to document the entire installation process, but we are going to speed it up. And if something goes wrong, we'll real quick stop and see what's going on. So, let's begin. Uh-oh, looks like we ran into our first snag. Okay, let's try again. Okay, let's try something. Okay, after some fiddling around, I got that disc to read, finally. We are going to continue with setup. And there we go, 100%. Okay, let's not cross our chickens before we're hatched, but I'm hoping this worked okay. Preparing to restart your computer. Finishing setup. The setup wizard is ready to start Windows 95 and begin the last part of the setup. Remove any disks from their drives. Okay. There we go. And we used all 21 disks. And then click finish to restart your computer and finish setup. Alrighty. So let's see how this went.
Okay, they're rebooted. Check out the RAM. Starting Windows 95. Getting ready to run Windows 95 for the first time. Sorry about that flickering too. Let me see what I can do about that. That's a little better. Oh. It's now setting up any plug and play devices you may have. Okay. Setting up the control panel and everything else. And we should be hearing a startup sound here in just a second, as long as the drivers for the sound blaster went through okay, which I'm assuming they would have. Preparing the help file for first use. Okay. Yeah, flickering is back, but uh, it's not horrible. Okay, let's get this set up right. Okay, when setup has finished configuring your system, you must restart your computer. Plus OK to restart your computer now. Okay. And it's rebooting. Ah, nice fresh Windows 95 boot screen. In case you noticed before that, I did have Windows 3.0 installed on here. I did it mainly because I wanted to test the discs for 3.0 and make sure they worked. And, well, I don't know, I was just, I was bored. <laughs> oh, that actually didn't take too long. Windows 95 is now finalizing settings for your computer. Hey, where's my startup sound? Well, it says we have it. Okay, well, it installed. Let's go to control panel and check that out really quick. See what's going on here. Okay, so something's wrong with the drivers. So we're gonna go to device manager here. And Creative Lab Sound Blaster 16 plug and play, okay. Says it's working properly. Okay. Alright. So, what's going on here? 
It says it's working, but I don't see any sounds. Okay. Well, it's claiming it's playing, but I'm not hearing anything. So... Something isn't right. So it turns out I actually had to reinstall drivers for the sound card. And we're going to try this again. Okay, let's try this again. There we go! Okay, so we just had an issue with the sound card driver. So, now we have to make sure we make all the sounds right because it did not install the sound files from the floppy disks. So I had to copy them over manually off screen. And we're actually going to reboot. And... Okay, so let's reboot this thing. And we will boot it up correctly this time. It's now safe to turn off your computer. Thank you. Alrighty, so let's turn this thing off real quick. And let's reboot with a fresh install of Windows 95. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, now we have a fresh install in Windows 95 on a 386. I'm actually very impressed. It didn't take too long to boot. Wow. Let's see, I'm going to get rid of this. We don't need that. We don't need that. A little sluggish, but not horrible that recycle bin. Now, did it keep any of my old files like it said it would? Let's check here. See, it kept Catacomb Abyss and it kept Wolfenstein 3D. You know what? Let's see how Wolfenstein 3D plays under Windows 95. I am curious should have no problems. Okay, it's not detecting the sound blaster for some reason. But, let's see. Okay. Let's 
check something here. Hmm. Maybe... You know, it might just not be working because Windows 95 is dealing with all the sound drivers and everything else. Okay. Oh, you know what? I know why. <laughs> I did not have... I wonder if it's because I did not have sound drivers installed under MS-DOS. Oh, well. I'm not too worried about it. Here, okay. Well, we have uh, PC speaker. That's something. <laughs> to be honest, it doesn't run half bad, really. There we go. That's a weapon. Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> it's hard to play this game when I'm having to put my arms around the camera like this. <laughs> oh well. Now, I want to play a couple MIDI files. So I'm gonna have to copy those over from a disc really quick. Give me half a second. Fortunately, right here, I copied the MIDI files from Windows 3.0 with multimedia extensions. So, we will just copy those. Okay, we got the MIDI files copied over. Now let's open Media Player. Let's play a couple MIDI files really quick. See how this 386 can handle playing some music. We'll do Passport first. So, yeah, this card turned out to be a royal turd burglar. Um, no matter what I did, I could not get the MIDI to work um, in Media Player at all. Like, there was no sound. Messed with the resources, and then it ended up crashing the system when I finally got to play, kinda. So I swapped it out for this ESS Audio Drive 866, and hopefully that works. It's got a genuine Yo Yamaha OPL chip, too. So, let's put this back together and hopefully it works. Okay, so, off camera, I got the drivers for the ESS audio drive on there. I hope I'm in the wrong place. Right there. Oh, excuse me, it's an ES688. I said 866 earlier. I'm... <laughs> Oops. Anyway, so let's try the MIDI again. There we go. Very nice. Let's try another one. Let's see how this thing can multitask on a 386. A little 
slow, but... <laughs> There's a little bit of a lag to it. Ah. Well, I think the last thing I'm going to do is try installing a screensaver, or putting on a screensaver. I have no idea what we're going to have here. Um, we'll do curves and colors. Okay. Okay, so I can do it. Man, it's a little slow. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what I was expecting, given this is a 386. But, I mean, it's not the worst. I mean, it does run. And you know what? I want to check one other thing. Yep, it did save the old Windows 3.x and MS-DOS system files. Cool. Alrighty. Well, I would say that was a success. For the most part. <laughs> We have Windows 95 running halfway decent on a 386DX33 with 8 megs of RAM. Sweet. Well, guys, we did it. <laughs> we put Windows 95 on a 386. That definitely went a little smoother than the last time I tried it. And it's actually doing marginally well. Considering, considering we're running at it, basically the minimum system requirements. Yeah, that was actually kind of neat. Well, guys, I hope you liked the video today. Hit that like button if you did, and uh, leave me a comment if you have any comments or questions on what you saw in the video today or anything else having to do with this channel for that matter. Um, and if you want to hit that subscribe button, if you like seeing stuff like this, I'd really appreciate it. We've crossed the threshold of 500 subscribers. Um, you guys are freaking awesome. Thank you so much to everyone who subscribed. And if you'd like to take it a step further, I just opened a Patreon <laughs> last night. There's a $2 membership thing on there, and that'll get you early access to future videos and sneak peeks at, sneak peeks at what is to come. You don't have to if you don't want to, but if you choose to, I'd really appreciate it. Um, it'll help keep this channel going, because um, Lord knows this stuff is getting harder and harder to come by, and the peripherals, hardware, machines, software even, it's getting more and more difficult to come by, and the price is consistently shooting up. Although I have seen certain things on eBay have dropped in price, like I've seen some motherboards that are a lot cheaper than they were just two years ago. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway guys, I hope to see you guys in the next video, and I'll catch y'all later.